Good evening, this is Dr. Thomas Klein. I'm coming to you from Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm a specialist in people with permanent, rare, painful diseases. Now we're facing uh, about 80% of them are people with permanent, untreated, rare diseases. Between the government and pharmacists and timid doctors, the treatment of people with long-term painful disease is disappearing. We have less than 18% by our polls of people being treated with an adequate amount of pain medicine. This is immoral. It's immoral to stand by and watch somebody with documented pain suffer because people don't believe them. We're running across some tests um, that may help prove that a person has painful disease. One of them is a simple $12 test called C-reactive protein. It's a test used to predict whether or not somebody's going to have a heart attack, CRP, C-reactive protein, but it's used now. We were just starting some research at the National Pain Council um, and JAF, educational, um, to see if this is common enough to be used as a diagnosis for chronic painful disease. We're doing a little Twitter poll right now, which you might want to go on Twitter and contribute to. It looks like 70% of people with chronic painful disease have an elevated CRP. Wouldn't that be nice? Then the doctors could have a test they could do for chronic painful disease. It's based on inflammation. Inflammation is behind all chronic pain. And this measures the amount of inflammation. Not only that, if you're treated, you can follow your treatment. In other words, oh, my CRP is down, and that corresponds with me having less pain, so the treatment is working. We're also doing some research on the fact that um, opiates are actually anti-inflammatory. So they're doing two things. They're cutting down on the inflammation, which cuts down on the pain, and then they're having activity in the mu receptors to actually um, uh, modulate the pain. Pain's a funny thing. You know, people can be in agony. Taking uh, an opiate makes them feel better, but they still feel a pinprick. So pain's a funny, a funny thing, but we do know that opiates work very well. And there's been a lot of documentation that they work very well, and it's being ignored by the pain nihilist. So back to the National Pain Council. Um, I've accepted a position there as director of medical science, and it's going to be pretty much full time. Uh, we're going to try to turn this big ship around if it's the last thing we do. This is the worst tragedy in American history, not the opioid epidemic. That's peanuts. There's a million addicts. There's 10 million people with chronic painful disease. Now, if you want to make yourself heard, go to this website, which we've talked about before, Suspend CDC. It will tell you how to write a letter to the new CDC director and the temporary head of the Office of Drug Control Policy in the White House. It doesn't take that much time. There's instructions there on how to do it. We're writing physical letters. We want physical letters this time. We want to be counted. It is time for people to be counted. People cannot act alone. We're estimating there's between 5 and 8 million people out there suffering from governmentally. It's not the government itself, it's the government, the CDC, convincing doctors to, to be their henchmen. Anyway, discontinuation. We are purposely discontinuating a medical treatment without substantial reason. So go there and send it in. And if you want to join the National Pain Council, just go to the website, National Pain Council, or you can email at this email. There's no fee. 
you sign up. If you want to volunteer, you have some skills, you can put that in there. The list is completely confidential. We are a private organization. We receive no money from government grants, universities, drug companies, no one. We receive our money strictly through donations. Get the hint? <laughs> so while you're there, if you want to donate, that would be wonderful because uh, we have virtually no money and we're all kind of chipping in right now, which um, none of us really have the, um, uh, the wherewithal to do. And uh, even the rich doctor doesn't have the wherewithal to do. So we would appreciate a little bit of help at the National Pain Council. So, what else do we have here? Um, we want to talk today about red flags. And I didn't make a little thing, so you just have to do my little one I just made. And what is this business about red flags? I'll give you an example. I had a patient who came to see me from a southern state. It took him 12 hours to get here because he couldn't find anybody else that understood his chronic painful disease. And he was about ready to commit suicide. So we started him on his pain medicine. He had a local pharmacy that was filling his pain medicine. So this is working out great. You know, he comes to see me every three months. We talk on the phone. We do a telemedicine uh, visit. So all of a sudden his pharmacist, he goes over to fill his prescriptions and because he's out and the pharmacist says, we're not going to fill for you anymore. And he said, why? He said, because the state has put red flags on this account. And the red flag was he was traveling more than a hundred miles to see me and the doses were too high. As you all know from watching these series, there is no such thing as too high a dose. The FDA makes it very clear in their package inserts that you can use any dose. And by the way, this is a package insert. This comes with the bottle of medicine. This is the official FDA blurb. Now, if you go to the FDA website, you'll find this. It's in there. But this actually comes with every bottle of pills. This is all that they have to say about the medicine. And of course, nobody's going to read this, right? So, you, it, it's easiest to go to the website and kind of pick out things. And if you read the dosage on oxycodone, for example, it says there's no limit. Another interesting thing is that in the package insert, it tells you that dependence and tolerance are to be expected as part of the treatment. So you know we're, we're dealing with this argument about tolerance causing you to have to escalate your dose. By the way, escalation is not a word we doctors use. Escalate your dose and then if you have a high dose for a long period of time, you automatically addict. Well, we know that's not true that either you're carrying the genetic predisposition and you will addict one half of one percent. If you don't have the addiction, you'll never addict. Never. Okay, so this has caused a lot of problems with um, the people saying that we've got all these overdoses because of prescription drugs. This is how many overdoses are due to prescription drugs. The rest of these are heroin addicts. And we had a little session on here before this all started in 2006 with a report by Leonard Pelosi, a CDC um, member. He works for the CDC and then we found out he's a prop member. So draw your own conclusions. All right, back to the topic of today, uh, red flags. So he gets two red flags down at his little pharmacy, too high a dose, and doctor out of state. So they refuse to fill his prescription. Well, wait a minute. If you have a red flag, you're supposed to check it out. Uh, in medicine, there's called, they're called risk factors. If somebody has a family history of heart attacks, 
then that's a little red flag and you check it out. You check out the family history, uh, you, you check out the person a little more thoroughly, but you don't automatically start treating just because you have this one red flag. You're doing a comprehensive. So red flags just mean to be careful. In that case where the doctor was more than 100 miles away and it was a high dose, the pharmacist should have just filled out a little report in his notes that he goes to a doctor because no one else would treat him and he's on a high dose because he's six foot four and he has a very severe disease and he has a certificate that says he's a certified pain patient. That's all the police and the federal uh, prosecutors are looking for is an explanation. So now I've been reading recently that pharmacies are being shut down and raided because they are not addressing the red flags. So pharmacists beware. So what I did is I made a list of all the red flags from the DEA and the Department of Justice and I was kind of surprised really because there's really quite a few. These are the red flags put out by the government that point to the fact you might be, might is the big word, might be a junkie or a diverter. There you are. These are taken from the federal government list. These are all red flags that the pharmacists are supposed to keep track of. I'll give you some examples. Patients travel a long distance. I had a patient that flew in from California because I happened to be a specialist in her disease. Uh, presenting prescriptions refused at other pharmacies. Ah, uh, you know, 80% of pharmacies are refusing to fill the prescription. So as soon as the pharmacy refuses to fill, you're screwed. You're now a pariah. They're not going to fill because you now have a red flag. Highly abused cocktails. Uh, that's up to us. That's saying that you're getting three medicines, benzodiazepines, uh, pain medicine, and muscle relaxant, which we researched thoroughly and does not really cause any medical problems, but it's on the list. It's on the list. Okay. Um, does the prescriber take cash only? So does the doctor take cash only? A lot of doctors only take cash because the insurance companies won't pay for these visits. Patient is from out of state. What difference does that make? Patients from out of state. These go back to the pain clinics 11 years ago, and there haven't been any pain clinics since, but it goes on the list. So if you're from out of state, it doesn't matter that you're not a crook. You're just from out of state. Now, supposedly the pharmacist is supposed to write something in, but they don't. They just say, we're not going to fill your prescription. Um, the lack of the doctor having board certification. Wow. <laughs> If you arrive with family members, that's a good one. If you request drugs by name, well, you're not really requesting because you have prescriptions. Um, and on and on and on. So this is what's going on with red flags. And uh, with that, I will say good night.